But when it comes down to studying and doing well in school, depending on who you are, with the distraction of family and work and and supporting your family with work, the job has to go. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, and in this podcast, I take your questions directly from the non-traditional pre-med form over at premedforms.com and answer them here on the podcast. Now, obviously, I can't answer every question, but we are constantly looking for new questions to flag and record here on the podcast. So if you have a question you want answered, go to premedforms.com, register for an account if you don't already have one, and ask your question, again, in the non-traditional pre-med discussion section of that form. Our question today is about a non-traditional student with a low GPA. Our question is, I'm currently a senior at Texas Tech University studying biology. I am in extreme need of advice and counseling. I will be graduating this December with probably around a 3.1 to 3.2 overall GPA and roughly a 3.0 science GPA. It has taken me six years to complete undergrad due to having to work full-time jobs to pay the bills and struggling with debilitating anxiety and depression. I got married halfway through college, which only took more time away from my studies. I cannot afford not to work. I have to support my wife and we have a baby on the way. They take precedent over everything because I have to support my family. However, this has made it difficult to go to school and perform well. I'm at the point now where I know I will need to complete some sort of master's program if I can even get into one or post back in order to show that I can perform well in school and get good grades. And I will need a master's in order to get a real job to support my family. Also, with having to work so much, I have no time to do extracurricular activities. I was a scribe in the ER for two years, which was the best experience I ever had. I learned so much about medicine and what it truly means to be a doctor. But that is the only, quote, real clinical experience I have. I am currently a medical equipment technician and work on testing medical devices, defibrillators, patient monitors, stretchers, EKG machines, etc. I've had this job for about eight years. I have to go to medical school and become a physician. It is a 100% have to, and there is... There are no other options for me. I cannot see myself being happy doing anything else, but I am stuck between a rock and a hard place with my track record of bad grades and length of time it has taken me to graduate. I am becoming increasingly worried that I will never be able to get into or do well in medical school, and I will be unhappy for the rest of my life. Is there anyone out there with some advice as to what I can or should do right now to start turning this around? I feel like I need to completely start from scratch And I am so, so worried that I have ruined all my chances of becoming a doctor just because I had to work and support myself and took a long time to graduate. On paper, I look like a horrible student. I'm just worried that I will I will not be able to support my family and I will end up being unhappy if I don't do everything I possibly can to try and get into medical school. Any advice or suggestions would be awesome. And I'm sorry for such a long post, my first time on here. Thanks, everyone. So this is a very, very common story that I hear from non-traditional students. And I actually had on, on the pre-med years podcast, I had a very similar story from Chad, who is a fourth year now, I believe, DO student who was initially rejected from the Caribbean. And that's the, the title of the episode, Rejected from the Caribbean, now with a U.S. acceptance. So that episode is premedyears.com slash 230. Again, premedyears.com slash 230. And in that conversation, Chad struggled with all of the same things. Chad had a family. He had his wife. He had a family. He had to support them. And so as Chad was going down this journey of wanting to become a physician, he was also struggling with the fact that he couldn't put all of his effort toward being a great student. He had to support his family. Chad didn't do very well. He went to BYU, I believe, uh, initially for undergrad. And then Chad did a post 
and didn't do very well because he was still trying to support his family. Finally, as a last-ditch effort, he finally said, you know what, I need to stop focusing on everyone else. I need to figure out a way for our family to sustain ourselves without me working all the time. And I need to go to school full-time and prove to myself and prove to others that I am going to be an amazing medical student. And that's what he did. He went and he completed an SMP. He got great grades. And he finally proved to himself and to others that he was smart enough to be a doctor. But he had to sacrifice a ton to get there. Right? And, and it depends on you as a person and your specific situation. In your situation with a wife and your, uh, your first kid on the way, can you sell a house and move in with your parents? Can you stop paying rent and move in with your parents? Can your wife start working? Maybe in your situation, you know what, the, the, the standard in your culture or whoever you are, whatever you're doing, the, your wife stays at home and takes care of the kids. Well, maybe... That has to change, at least temporarily, so that you can go to school to become a physician. At some point, at the end of the day, right? The, the, the common phrase for Einstein is if you keep repeating the same mistakes or keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, right? That's insanity. What you were doing, what Chad was doing, back at, again, episode 230 of the pre-med years, was doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting a different result, but still failing. Working to support family and going to classes, going, well, maybe if I just try harder, I'll do better. Maybe if I just sleep less, I'll do better. But when it comes down to studying and doing well in school, depending on who you are, with the distraction of family and work and and supporting your family with work, The job has to go a lot of the time. And so start from there with your family, with all of your loved ones around you, including parents and those who can and will support you during this time. Sit down with all of them and say, here's what I need. I need to become a physician, right? That's that's the end goal. I need to get into medical school. To get into medical school and even during medical school, I'm not going to be able to work. I can't. I need to focus on my grades. I need to focus on my classes. What can we do as a family structure, as a family unit, to help me live this dream? And if they're not willing to help, then there's a problem and and obviously a lot more discussion has to happen. But normally, they'll go, okay, well, my my uh, once a month subscription clothing uh, box I don't need. We don't need our gym membership. We don't need this. We don't need that. We can sell the house. We can not pay for rent and go live with the parents. Right? You can do all of those things. There are lots of things that you can do to figure out a way to support yourself and make sure that your family is taken care of as well. And unfortunately, a lot of students stop at, well, I have to support my family, so I have to work. And everything else has to fit into that. But your whole paragraph here, three paragraphs here, your your whole question is based around the premise of, I'm not doing well, doing what I'm doing. Help. Well, the help is you need to stop doing what you're doing so that you can focus on your classes. That's where you have to start. Your chances of getting into medical school are very slim until you take that next step. And then once you take that next step, then you can do your master's program. Then you can do some sort of post-bac. You can get that upward trend. And just like Chad, you can start and get into medical school. And now Chad's a rock star. He's posting all the time on his Facebook page about getting scholarships for for tons of different things. So he's crushing it. And he's got like four or five kids. So it's doable. You just need support. And, And look, Chad, I think, talked about it in the podcast where they made the decision as a family to go on like welfare services and get food stamps and 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 really just lean on help for him to be able to live his dream. And obviously all of that money that helped him during that time is easily gonna get 
get paid back through the taxes of being a physician later on. And so it was worth it, depending on how you you see leaning on social services like that. So get the help you need so that you can step away from you being the one needing to provide for the family so that you can go focus on yourself and your classes. That doesn't mean you give up on your family. It just means you are making sure that they're supported in a different way so that you can go and take care of yourself and live your dreams. All right, hopefully that was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you are a non-traditional student and you want a question answered here on the podcast, hopefully answered here on the podcast, go to premedforums.com and ask your question in the non-traditional pre-med discussion. I want you to go check out check out mapped.com. That's M-A-P-P-D.com and sign up to be notified of all of the amazing things that we're doing over there. This is a software, a technology platform that I've partnered with someone uh, who is has been in the pre-med space for 20 years in the test prep world uh, with my knowledge of the pre-med space and we're planning on hiring. Hopefully, uh, we're, we're gonna put an offer out pretty soon to hire someone pretty amazing as well who has an amazing resume in the pre-med and medical school world. We are doing some amazing thing at mapped.com. Again, that's M-A-P-P-D dot com. Go sign up to be notified of all the amazing stuff we're doing over there to help you as a student get through this journey. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.